Hey, it's Digi and May's Pokemon Journey. The episode we were afraid of from the start. The one we've been putting off for weeks. Yeah. Um the the first the first episode of of this show has come out and uh all of the previous ones have been recorded before that point. Mm-hmm. This is the first one we're recording after the first one's been released. And, uh, yeah, we had been doing these, we did the first, like, four in the span of the same week. Yeah, we were say. firing them out. Uh, we've been, it's been a good week and a half since the last one we did, because we were really afraid of having to watch Jirashi Wishmaker, because we both remembered it being terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, how had you seen this movie before? Um, when I had just moved to New York, I was living with my grandparents, and they didn't have, uh, like, cable. But they had some kind of like weird on demand thing. Mm-hmm. So we'd watch a lot of on demand movies and this was on the platform. So I was like, Fuck yeah, Pokemon. Yeah. Gotta and watch this it. This is the one you haven't And kissed. I just remember it, it being an eternity. Yeah. Like That's how I saw it on Cartoon Network. And I remember the same thing. I saw it probably in two thousand four or five. And I just remember being like why is this so fucking boring? Yeah. You know? Like, it feels insanely slow and long and, like, not a movie. And that's how I remember it. And I was, like, 13 at the time. So, you know, I might not have been the most into Pokemon at um, at that point. Yeah, I had definitely gone through the height of my Pokemon phase yeah. when this came out and when I could see it, but... But, I but, still wanted to like it. Yeah, like, I still would have embraced a good Pokemon mm-hmm. movie. Um, and I, I later saw Destiny Deoxys, and I did like that movie. Um, so, to me, that was... I think that's kind of what made me realize it was just like, okay, that movie sucks. It's not that po- It's not that I'm out of Pokemon to such an extreme that, like, I can't enjoy one anymore. It's like, that movie is just garbage. Yeah. And uh, so we were both afraid to watch it, and eventually we... Just we're like, well, let's get it over with. Yep. Rip the Band-Aid off. We know we know it won't get this bad again. Like We hope. It, it can't get this bad again. Do you really think that? I, I think so because the other ones at least have production values. Like, uh, everything I've seen of newer Pokemon movies, they feel like movies. This is the one that least feels like a movie out of all of them. And I know we said a lot of that about... The, the even the Latios and Latias one having like lower production values but that movie it was more like they tried and it was just awkward like the money wasn't there but they were trying to make a movie this one felt like it was just an episode of the show um, definitely had that feeling yeah but before we even talk about that we gotta talk about the shorts oh boy we gotta talk about them shorts oh my god the Pikachu, uh, it's Pokemon Gotta Dance. Gotta Dance. This is probably the worst piece of Pokemon media I've ever seen. This might be the worst, like, cartoon I've ever seen. Ah, come on. It's pretty bad. I've seen some real bad cartoons. I don't know. It's really bad. (laughs) It's really fucking bad. Pokemon Gotta Dance made me understand why they stopped putting Pikachu shorts before the movies. Because Pikachu shorts had clearly gone to shit. Mm-hmm. We're we're talking about the first Pikachu short was like, like was Kino. like my favorite piece <laughs> of Pokemon I'd ever seen. Yeah. And now this is the worst piece of Pokemon I've ever seen. This is something you would never want to rewatch. No. If you remember, seeing I regret this, seeing it once. Yeah. I wish we had pretended it wasn't part of the movie and just skipped it. Yep. It, Me too. By the way. So both this short and the movie are weirdly long. This short is 22 minutes, which is like the longest of the Pikachu short mm-hmm. so far. The film is an hour and 20 minutes, which is the longest of the film so far. Mm-hmm. In spite of both of them having the least going on, the fewest ideas, the least, just the least everything. They're the worst. Why are they so fucking long? And that contributes a lot to why they're so painful. Um, though the Gotta Dance short is just, uh, do you want to describe it? Do I want to describe it? So, it's 
centered around Meow. So we're not, like, centered around the Pikachu posse. Yeah. It's all about Meowth and Team Rocket. And we got, got Cacnea and Surviper, who are hideous. Yeah. And not fun characters. This is, okay, a big part of the problem here is that we've moved into the advanced generation. We've moved into Gen 3. And uh, I know there's a lot of people who love Gen 3 to death. It's their favorite gen. That's not us. And if you watch our Pokemon design rating videos, we were uh, by far the harshest on Gen 3, I think. I think that one came out the worst in our uh, our ratings. It was that or Gen 4. Yeah. 3 and 4 were pretty fucking rough. And, you know, a big part of these Pikachu shorts, what's made them so great, is just seeing all these amazing character designs yeah. uh, animated beautifully and interacting and, uh, you just know... Just Pokemon doing unique things with each other. And... Yeah. Things that are unique to their... To what they are. Yeah. You know, like, unique ideas. Like, you know, Meryl and Squirtle have a water race. Because that's, you know, Pikachu and Raichu. They're both uh, electric Pokemon. They have a, they have sparks fl- flying. Uh, yeah. This one is... Gen 3 Pokemon who we... And, and not just that it's Gen 3. There are plenty of good Gen 3 Pokemon, but they are not in this no, short. No. It's like, you got Pikachu, all three of the starters, and Lotad. Those are the... Freaking Lotad. I spent so long just trying to figure out why Lotad was in Pikachu's posse. Uh-huh. And then I remembered Brock was in Gen 3. Like He right. was in the Advanced series. And I'm like... I guess Brock has a water grass type. Yeah. That, I guess that makes sense. I remember I mean, Lotad being important. I don't, because I didn't see enough advanced generation. I just remember, I, I had like a a Pokemon book cover, because I went to New York City and I bought a lot of Pokemon merch at the Poke Center, and I got a lot of like Gen 3 stuff, because it was right when Gen 3 was like announced. And there was Brock, and there was a fucking Lotad, and I distinctively remember that. I miss all my old Pokemon friends. Yeah. That's how I felt watching this. Like, Charizard. Describe no. describe to me the personality of Charizard. Charizard was lazy and stubborn. Yes. But he had a heart of gold. Describe the personality of Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur was a loyal good boy. Yeah. Always uh, looking out for Togepi. Yes. Very, very good natured. He's a good boy. He's a protector. Because that's how he, he was introduced into the series. He was a protector of uh, this place. Describe Squirtle. Squirtle. Hot stubborn, headed. hothead rebel. Yeah. Six sunglasses. Six style. Now, describe to me the personality of Torchic. Torchic! <laughs> describe to me the personality <laughs> of Mudkip. Now, now, I'll give you that, that Trico did have a personality in this short. Yeah, Trico was edgy. He had, uh, he, he had the little stick. He doesn't give a fuck. He's unflappable. Yeah. That that was the impression I got. Now, Fucking unflappable. Yeah, but we don't see enough of any of these guys no. like being themselves in this short. Uh, they're just kind of all there. And Trico's the only one who displays any person. Oh, and Lotad, Lotad is, is uh, literally brain retarded. dead. Yeah, Lotad is just completely Lotad brain dead. did too many whippets yeah. in high school. <laughs> what are whippets? Hold on. <laughs> I need to describe to me what a whippet is. Oh my is. god, it's when, um, when idiots inhale condensed air. Oh, okay. And it's like a brief high because yeah. the oxygen is like going straight but to your brain. But it also murders your brain But um, if you do too many of them, abuse the whippets, you can uh, mess yourself up forever. Mm-hmm. People who are high on whippets, like look and sound retarded for like 30 minutes afterwards i remember when i was in middle school one of the ways that some of the older kids were getting high is they would they would crouch down hold their breath for a while and then jump up (laughs) what yeah because it, it kind of makes you, like, semi-unconscious for you a second. You know there's probably kids listening to this who are going to try this at home. Uh, if they're retarded, I never tried it. <laughs> I knew about it. I was a kid, and I went, oh, that sounds like a good way to kill yourself. So I let's was not do that. I sitting at home, listening to Digivro, talking about Pokemon if movies, and then that, heard him talk about that. They're probably already doing I'd be this. like, Digivro told me that I can get high. Mm. I wouldn't describe it as high. It's just you will go semi-unconscious for a second. Um, anyways, so, yeah, Lotad's retarded. 
And that's his, that's. Then you got Meowth and Seviper, who's ugly and terrible, and uh, Kecleon, who I don't even know who had Kecleon. Is that what, is that what James's Pokemon you mean was? Cacnea? Cacnea. Yeah, James had Cacnea, Jesse had Seviper. Don't even remember Cacnea being in there. Um, then we got, uh, then we got, so, so the idea of this, it's a really weird and complicated plot for a Pikachu short. Yes. Um, that is not really explored. It's just, there's way more narration in this one from Meowth. Meowth, because it's from his perspective and he's explaining us the story and he has a lot of dialogue and it's all bad. Not just bad, like it's badly written. And yeah. it's really annoying because Meowth's voice is fucking grating when you hear enough of it. Um, He's good for those zingers. He's not good yeah. for, like... Well, I think this is Meowth voice number two. I don't think this is the original Meowth voice. I can't even Because I don't tell. remember him being this obnoxious in the other times we've heard him. But in any case, Meowth is here. And um, basically, Team Rocket, for some reason has built themselves a base on the side of a cliff. Just Jesse James and Meowth have built this, like, huge structure into the side of a cliff. It doesn't make sense, because isn't their whole, like, existence being mobile and trying to keep yes. up with... They have why always they... been adventurers. Why would they put so much effort into... There is no explanation. They've built a base into the side of a cliff. You look like you're really trying to process this. Like, you, like now that you've thought about it, it's, like, really bothering you. Yeah. That's how I describe it. Who thought this was a good idea? I don't know! Who thought people would want to, like, it's not even a cool base. The inside isn't cool. The outside's not even cool. No, it's just weird. It's like... It doesn't make sense. It's, it's like junk. a bunch of cubes stacked on top of each other. It seemed like there was a weird dice theme. Yeah. Because, like, there was weird CG dice. Or die. Cause yeah. It's correct. They were weird CG die, and I didn't understand why. And then I remember seeing, like, the side Yo, that was die. weird CG die. I didn't understand why. I just didn't understand. Like, what does that have to do with dancing? Yeah. Or Team Rocket. So, okay, the idea here is that they've built this base, <laughs> and they want to invite the boss to come look at it. And they're going to put on, like, a show for the boss when he shows up. And Meowth has a staff... A magical staff that is not explained at all that can force Pokemon to dance. Yes. It plays music and it forces Pokemon to dance. Which my immediate thought when he said that was, why isn't this just used to catch Pokemon? If you can force all Pokemon to dance, thereby putting them in a helpless state, you can then catch them. That's all Team Rocket does. Pikachu. All they do is find goofy ways to catch Pokemon. But they've got the staff... That makes Pokemon dance, and they're using it to throw a dance party for the boss. <laughs> and they've got these three. What are they called? Wismer? Is that the? Uh, yeah, they're Wismer. They got three Wismer that are supposed to sing in this performance, and it's like Wismer, Meowth, and the other Pokemon are meant to do some kind of song and dance show for the boss. I don't know why they want Wismer because those things have really obnoxious voices. Um, don't it's know why they want probably all they could find. But they captured these three Wismer that they're going to use for this performance. And Meowth is setting it up because Jesse and James have gone off to do something. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> um, and so what this movie ends up being is uh, Pikachu and friends, like, discover the, the, the rocket base. And they find the Wismer who are in a cage and they, they set them free. And then there's this just sort of a uh, Meowth comes out and it's like, oh, you guys set free the Wismers. Uh, and then the staff goes off on accident and everybody starts dancing. And that's the rest of this. It's just a, a sequence of accidentally activating the staff, which plays this really obnoxious, like, Japanese festival music. And the Pokemon. And it's on loop. The Pokemon are all voiced constantly. Yeah. At all times while they're moving, they're making noises. And Meowth, especially, is making all kinds of noises. <laughs> and it's the most obnoxious fucking thing I've it's ever seen. It's really a lot. It's so annoying. It's just characters going like, 
And then there's like 18 layers of it because it's every Pokemon voiced at the same time. And it goes on forever. There's no end. And the dance scenes, the weirdest part about it is if you told me, like, there's going to be a whole (laughs) film of Pokemon dancing. Sounds great. Yeah. Sounds adorable. Every single Pokemon short up to this has had a scene of Pokemon dancing and it has been great. Yeah. Like, they've had really cool choreography and cool Pokemon and cool music. This didn't have any of that. Yeah. Well, what gets me is uh, location. Like, think of the second movie in, in, in the uh, the rescue adventure. You know, there's a scene of all the vile plumes in gloom, and they're dancing on this, like, beautiful, um, like, waterfall place. Like, it's this really cool-looking room with all these Pokemon dancing, and it looks dope. This whole thing takes place in the Team Rocket structure, and it's just, like, a half-built, like, wooden structure place. Yeah. It looks really uninteresting, and this whole short is, like, watching Pokemon dance in and this boring location. in this house. Yeah, and, like, it doesn't... It just isn't cool. It's not entertaining at all. No. Um, and it just gradually gets more and more obnoxious. The worst part is they're doing the same dance and the music doesn't change. The they're music just... starts changing later on when they start. They There's like there's different song yeah. options on the staff. But the majority of the short is just with that like first yeah, song we hear. Song. And they just keep adding more and more Pokemon to the dance. Yeah. And, and they pick the shittiest like... Team Rocket's Pokemon are interesting, and then the ones that are, like, incidentally... One of them's a snake! How is that fun to watch that dance? Yeah. It, like, why? And the incidental Pokemon who show up is, like, Loudred, who's it's ugliest hideous. thing. And, uh, the bigger version of Cac... Cac, uh, whatever. The, the big cactus. A big cactus shows up, right? Does it? Yeah, there was another big Pokemon that shows up. I thought it was Ludicolo. Is that what it is? I thought it was Ludicolo. Yeah, that's that's what it is, Ludicolo. Uh, There's no, because the Samba cactus was there. That's Ludicolo. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Ludicolo is there doing a Samba, and uh, (laughs) look, man, it was really hard to pay attention (laughs) to this. Like, we were we were eating while watching this, and at some point, I was like staring into my food (laughs) so I wouldn't have to look at the screen anymore. It was so fucking no, I lie. annoying. I was also doing that. You started checking your phone at one point. Yeah. You were on Twitter because you couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, I had to follow Slow Flake on Twitter because I remembered that I loved him. Uh, I don't know <laughs> who that is. Um, yeah, it was a really, really, really annoying. Annoying, annoying, annoying. And it kept getting more annoying and more annoying. And more with annoying. Lou- and louder 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 and louder. And it lasted 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, I would give it a one. A one? I'd give it a one. I would also give it a one. It was a one. It was a one out of ten. It was one out of ten. It was the worst... The worst Pokemon media I've ever seen. Even though the the uh, artwork and animation was arguably not as bad as the previous short. It was better. The previous one was, like, really jarring. And yeah. Like, they Those, had, like, one screenshots had... or, like, little clips of the previous shorts in this short. Did you remember that? Uh, no. They had, like, this really weird sequence with, like, the CG die. And they had, like, a bunch of Polaroids. And and each Polaroid was a clip from each previous short. Like, they had the mountain from the first one, and they kept going. And then they just showed the giant fucking CG train from the last one, and I'm like, (laughs) No! I don't remember that at all. Um, Yeah, the last one was... was, But I don't want to say it was uglier, because while... Oh, that train was so bad, though. (laughs) Yeah, but, like, I don't want to say that the short as a whole was uglier, because while the art and animation was not as good, like, the... The design work was better. Yeah. Like, like the whole I, scene with dust stocks in the forest was more interesting to look at than anything in this short. Like, this short, just the locations were so fucking boring. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and also the CG when, when things were falling apart. Like, every oh. time something breaks, it's a CG model that looks really bad. Just don't even put the breaking parts in it. No. Just <laughs> just cut it out. Just don't make this short that is stupid and, like, yeah. the whole concept is terrible. Yeah. 
So anyway, that leads us to Jirashi Wishmaker. Oh boy. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> not gonna lie. We couldn't finish this movie. Nope. We could not do it. I have a life to live. I can't watch an 80 minute. That's, yeah. Pokemon movie that sucks balls. You, there's no way to justify watching it. Why is it so fucking long? None of them were this Cause, long. Because every single day when they make a wish, they have to have a five minute sequence of them talking about their day and laying on the ground while May holds up her weird fucking necklace thing and that counts down the makes days. a wish that nobody cares about because May is a shitty character. May, yeah, so. The May in Pokemon is unfortunately far worse than the May commenting on Pokemon today. I don't know. Like that's they're probably on par. No, you're <laughs> vastly superior, May. This May is so boring and shitty. She's a nag. And Max sucks too. Max is autistic and May nags. Yeah. And Brock has gotten worse. Brock's just a dumbass now. Like Brock used to be the voice of reason. Yeah. Now he just says dumb shit. Yeah. And, uh, and Ash is helpless. Like, and and also he's portrayed now as that picking up girls is his main thing, as opposed to being yeah, a Pokemon yeah, breeder. You know, he's not a Pokemon breeder or a former gym leader or like a cool, smart, older guy. No character people look up to or the cook. He is just there to he's just a weird pervert make who sexist him comments and yeah. like stare at women. So there's a um, uh, before each of the films. Uh, in the Japanese versions, there's a two-minute short called The World of Pokemon, and this features an updated version of it, where we are exp- we have it explained to us what Pokemon is and the idea of legendary Pokemon and stuff like that. And uh, it shows us clips from all the previous movies of the legendaries before showing uh, Kyogre, who's not even in this fucking movie, um, and Groudon. Gotta give him some love, because they know they won't. Yeah. They know he won't come up no- later. And, uh, they describe, like, what our heroes are about. Like, they're trying to become, like, you know, Ash wants to become the greatest trainer and, like, do this and that. And then, like, he's describing all their motivations. And he literally describes Brock's motivation as picking up girls. Yep. Not being the greatest breeder, which is what he said, what his whole thing was in the original series. No, now he just wants to pick up girls. That's, that's why he's on this journey. Yeah. Um, so, so, anyway... Fucking that that opening segment. The worst is when the narrator like laughed. Like yeah. the voice actor who was narrating. Not all this. of them are uh, have a uh, you know Pokemon related things. It was like which by the way they've replaced the narrator with a sound alike who doesn't sound enough alike <laughs> and he sounds really bad. Yeah. Um, the voice acting in this is fucking awful. Mm-hmm. All of the voice actors who are brought in just for this movie are really bad. I hate May's voice actor and Max's voice actor. I hate May's voice and I've heard it in a thousand anime before. Yep. Because she's one of those who's in everything, every yep. dub. And it's I g- fucking generic hate anime it. girl voice. Um, but yeah, everybody sounds like shit. And the opening section, the opening narration, like dovetails into the beginning of the plot of the movie every other film every other pokemon movie opened with a cold open they always opened with like a really cool scene showing us the villains or the backstory like establishing what this is going to be about without showing us our heroes you know like Mm -hmm. going off and like showing us some cool scene and then you get hit with the big title card and then the movie starts with the heroes um, in this movie, the narrator just explains to us that, like, oh, there's this stuff with a with a thing that's going to happen, and there's, like, an ambitious bad guy who's going to fuck it up. And then it goes to the title card. Yep. And then it cuts to Ash and friends who are just kind of camping in a place because they're waiting for a comet that they're going to see. There's no big opening battle scene. There's no opening song. Yeah, you're right. There is no opening battle scene. There's nothing exciting. No. Nothing exciting. It opens on them fucking just sitting on a cliffside in the dark in a fucking field waiting for a comet that doesn't come till later. Yeah. Um. And then and that lasts a while. Like it lasts like a good couple of minutes before the circus starts coming into town. And so all these trucks pour in and they start setting up a circus. And there's like a scene of 
this weird, like, super advanced technology being used to set up the tents. It's super fucking bizarre. Yeah, and I it's... wasn't sure if that was supposed to be, like, really cool and awe-inspiring. I kind of or... found it, like, it was fascinating, but I, I don't know, like, it didn't make sense. It didn't make me hype. No. It just felt like, whoa, what the fuck? It really, like, like took me out of the experience of yeah. watching a Pokemon movie. It's like I was more interested in this carnival being set up than yeah. anything in this movie. And then it wasn't until finally it cuts to they're at the carnival and we see that the carnival's all Pokemon themed that it was like, oh, okay, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Why didn't this movie just open with them riding on rides at a Pokemon carnival? Having fun? The because opening this movie's not supposed to be fun. The opening scene of this movie should have been... Ash and friends at the Pokemon Carnival going, whoa, cool, there's a Pokemon ride. And then it would be like, it's time to duel in, there's no backing down. Y'all move out of the cards is where magic is found. And we'd see like Ash in the bumper cars and the, all this beautiful animation. And then as we get to the chorus of the song, the tick 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 it's them getting to the top of a roller coaster. And then, yeah, yeah, foosh, and the roller coaster goes down. Whoa. And there's, like, all these Pokemon, like, that they're blasting past while they're on the coast. Like, all these, like, animatronic Pokemon. They go through, like, a cave, and there's Zubats in the cave of the coaster, you know? And it's all Yo. like, Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> He's the king of games! I'm more hyped for this movie, I just imagined. With, that plays the Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> theme song um, in the middle of it. Than I am for this movie, oh but no. Oh my god. We finally get to the carnival, and it's just like they're playing bumper cars, and like, I'm a bumper, mm, bumper car. Bumper cars look like Pokemon. Yeah. And then, I'm uh, pretty sure in the Indigo League, there was a couple episodes where they were at a carnival. Uh huh. Like the episode where there's like an execute that evolves into an executor, and there's like Misty's in some kind of magic show. And that was like a better standalone piece than this movie. Well, that's the weirdest thing about this movie is that it feels like an episode of the show. It feels like, like an arc, like a four episode arc of the show. Yeah, it never, there's never a moment where it steps into the movie feel. There's never like a cool looking thing, like the start of Pokemon Heroes, where they're having this big race through the streets of, or the, the streams of Venice, <laughs> and that was really cool and interesting. It was like, whoa, this is something you never get from the show, because art design, and like creating this thoroughly yeah. imagined location, yeah. and like... This cool idea of a Pokemon race. No, this is just like plods along. They set up a carnival. They go to the carnival. It's not that interesting. Um, they see a magic show. It's just a basic ass magic show with Pokemon. You know, Curlia comes out of a hat. That's cute, I guess. It was kind of cute. Team but, uh... Rocket comes in and attacks as they usually do yeah. in the show and they get blown away. If you cut off the movie, like, right there it's just an episode of pokemon like yeah. you just watched a yeah. whole episode about them going to a pokemon carnival team rocket shows up and fucks things up and they blow them away if the episode had just ended right after that it would have just been an episode of pokemon um but oh no my friends it continues and uh so they've got this weird space rock at the magic show that looks like dog shit. Oh my god, when the there's like a woman who appears out of a box and then she like has this giant purple crystal. It looks like shit. It looks like she's yeah. holding up a turd. Because not only is the thing <laughs> stupid looking, oh but god. it's in CG and yeah. she's not. And it looks so fucking weird. Yeah. And then she like holds it up and I think her arms were in 3D, but yeah, not her body. Yeah. It's like her arms, her arms and the crystal are 3D. Why did they have to make her arms in 3D? I don't fucking know, dude. It was so awkward. It was the shittiest looking cut I've probably <laughs> ever seen in a Pokemon movie. Um, like we were laughing. It was that bad. Yeah. And um, so then, yeah, Ash and Max get involved, because Max starts hearing a voice out of the fucking space rock. Um, and after the show, the, mu the magicians just kind of give Max the rock, because like, oh, you heard the voice? Here. You know, like, you can have this, I guess. And then uh, later on, it like uh, they see the comet, and then the thing, uh, Jirachi's in it. And, yeah, it, and, and they're Jirachi all like, oh, cool, out. Jirachi. Like, their, their reaction is really, like, like <laughs> literally, like, oh, wow, it was real. Cool. You I know? mean, Ash has seen a lot of legendary Pokemon I guess up so. to this point. It's just like, there was just no feeling <laughs> of like, 
wow, Jirachi. It was just like, oh, oh yeah, it's Jirachi. it's Jirachi. That's neat. Um, <laughs> so then they're like, they start making wishes. Like, like basically Jirachi's thing is it can grant wishes, like, randomly, like, mm-hmm. ad, ad nauseum, I guess. And Max is like, I wish for candy. I want lots of candy. And lots, Jirachi just starts sp- spawning tons and tons of candy in this, like, van that they're sleeping in. Yeah, they're sleeping in the magician's a- girlfriend's a- van. And it fills up with candy. And then they're all being a bunch of fucking assholes because they all start fighting over who gets to make the next wish from Jirachi. Literally pulling on Jirachi in multiple directions. I'm like, guys, this is the shit you usually are telling other people not to do. It just felt very out of character it to did. me. And it, it's indicative of how shit May is, because like Misty would have been the one telling them to stop. Yeah, May is a fucking brat. She's a total brat. She and Max are constantly like yelling at each other over nothing. You know, I mean, they act like real siblings of their age, but that is unfortunate to have to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, like there's a scene where, like after they resolve this this issue, May like blames Max for the missing candy because. Uh, he made the wish. And she's like, this is all your fault. And it's like, bitch, what are you talking about? It's a fucking magic candy dispenser. Like, <laughs> yeah. what the hell did he know was gonna happen? Oh, man. It's so obnoxious. And again, it goes on. This is like, we are already 30 minutes into the movie at this point. Like, this is what's happening at the 30 minute mark. If you're at the 30 minute mark in, like, Pokemon 2000, you know, like, they're fucking getting captured into the ship by yeah, that point, yeah. you know? Shit's going down. At this point in the Latias and Latios movie, he's found the secret garden, you know? At this point in, like, Celebi, they're, they're being gay in a tree together. Like, <laughs> this is... It just feels like this movie hasn't even started yet because we don't, we don't know what the point is. We don't actually know what the plot is. It's yeah. not until after this scene... That we find, like, like we get the hint that the, the magician's the bad guy. And, like, he's got all these machines that look like they're probably to do something bad. You were, like, surprised to find out that the magician was the bad guy. Yeah, I couldn't believe that such a boring character <laughs> who doesn't look like he's actually going to be important is the bad guy. Also, there's Absol. The Pokemon Absol is around. Because I guess he shows up before a tragedy. So Absol shows up to try to, like, stop Celebi. Um, Celebi. So, I mean, Jirachi. I don't fucking care about this they're movie. All, they're all a cute mascot. Guys. Around this point is where I went, all right, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Like, we're, we're almost, we're like 35 minutes into this movie. It is going nowhere. Um, so we start skipping through. <laughs> And there's, like, people demanding the... Basically, the magician guy is supposed to summon Groudon. He needs, like, a certain amount of, like, Groudon DNA and magic power or something. And these people are, like, just... They're, like, oh, just make it happen. He says something like, I need more of the the stuff in order for this to work. And they go, be quiet with your mumbo-jumbo. And I'm just, like... (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't okay, clear. Was he speaking know. to another person or was it the yeah, stone? He was talking to like a voice. I thought it was like the stone was talking to him that he was holding. I have no fucking idea. I don't know. Again, we were skipping through at this point. Um, long story short, he summons Groudon. Groudon's way too powerful. And Groudon they, def- is... they then have to get rid of Groudon. Groudon's just evil Celebi from the fourth movie. Yeah, it's literally the it's same the thing. It's the same scene. Yeah. Um, the same thing happens. He just, like, is absorbing everything that's around him. Yeah. And it's just some, like... But it's even less interesting this yeah. time. Like, it's... Because it's at night, and it's just, like, a dark, wooded area. The only, like, in- cool part about this is, like, Ash is flying around on a Flygon. Um, but that's that's it. It's yeah, fucking Yeah, the Flygon boring. thing was kind of cool. Um, so we just kind of skipped through to the end, and we were like, yep, that's a thing. I give it a one. I give it a one. <laughs> a one? I give it a one. I couldn't watch it. It was unwatchable. We, even the parts we skipped to, like, none of it inspired me to be like, oh, that looks cool. Let's watch it from here. It was just like... Nope. There was actually a moment I where I skipped ahead and they were in, like, this forest area that looked kind of pretty. 
And so I went, oh, this looks all right. Like, and I, I remembered that the rest of the movie is in the forest. So I was like, oh, this looks all right. And it's showing all these Pokemon in the forest and stuff. And then from there, Aww. it immediately cuts to them camping out again. Max and J- Jirachi are fucking around. May's counting down the nights on her stupid calendar thing. And I was just like, oh, right. This movie has nothing going on in it. Why the fuck is it 80 minutes long? Never truly understand that. No. Um, so yeah, uh, it's terrible and I hate it and, uh, I give it a one. I didn't finish it. Yeah. So I think I'd also have to give it a one. Yeah. By theory of ones. Theory of ones. The theory of ones. This was a fucking wash, guys. This was bad. I can't believe the Pokemon, the Pikachu short was as bad as it was. Like, that was what really shocked me about this. Yeah. Like, I knew Jirachi was going to be boring and shitty. I did not expect the opening. I would say it was even worse than the movie. I know. After we had watched the short, we were both like, well, there's no way the movie could be worse than this. Yeah. Um, They're both unwatchable. Oh, God. Don't avoid. Avoid these. Avoid them at all costs. If you're trying to watch Pokemon movies, do not watch Jirachi Wishmaker or the Pikachu short. The next one, I believe, is Destiny Deoxys, which is so. a much better movie. I know I've seen it. It's fun. It's got uh, it's got Munchlax. And Rayquaza. It's got Rayquaza. It's got Plusle and Minun. It's actually animated and looks like a movie. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one. I'm glad we've gotten through the hardest part of this. Me too. We've gotten through the part that will make... I just hope that this is the worst Pokemon movie. Because if we see another one that's this bad, I could easily see losing the will to continue this series. Yeah. Um, But I think this might be the worst one. Yeah. Any closing comments? Closing comments? Yeah. Carnies freak me out. You know? This movie was a carnival... Carnies are scary. Don't watch Midori. Don't watch this movie. (laughs) And see you next week. Peace out.